in this video we are going to discuss about c program to implement fcfs scheduling algorithm fcfs means first come first serve scheduling algorithm so that means the job which enters first into the ready queue will be executed first uh, let's see a problem based on that problem we will discuss the algorithm we will discuss the program so here this is the problem here we have five processes are available in the ready queue the arrival times are given the arrival times are 0 to 468 so process 1 the arrival time is 0 process 2 the arrival time is 2 so likewise we have the arrival times and burst to times are also given the burst to times are 3 6 4, 5, 2. So process 5 burst time is 2. Likewise uh, process 1 burst time is 3. Now based upon the arrival time and burst time we have to compute uh, completion time, turnaround time and waiting time and then we need to display all these times as well as uh, average turnaround time and average waiting time. So let's see the logic parallelly we will see the uh, problem also. So first here, uh, so here we are using stdio.h. Why? Because we are using printf and scanner functions. They are available in stdio header file. Int. Here n represents number of processes. Whereas 80 of 10 means it is an arrival time. So totally uh, maximum we can have 10 processes. Next bt of 10 means burst to time. So here the inputs are number of processes, arrival times and burst to times or inputs. Whereas WT means waiting time array, waiting time. TAT means turnaround time. Next CT means completion time. Next in order to compute the completion time, we need a variable called sum. So that's why we are using sum. Uh, we need to take uh, help of that variable. So for loop repetition, we are using three variables. Here we need to calculate uh, the total turnaround time uh, average as well as uh, waiting time average. So for that purpose, uh, we declared uh, uh, total TAT. TAT means turnaround time. So total turnaround time is zero as well as uh, total waiting time is zero. So both are declared as float. Why? Because we know that in C, in C programming, Float by integer means float. Uh, number of processes are nothing but n. So n is integer value. So that's why we are taking the numerator as float. So what is the first input? Print of enter number of processes. Scan of percentage d comma m percent n. So next input. Enter the process arrival time and burst to time. So here we are using a for loop. So print of enter arrival time of process. Here if you, if you see here process of percentage d so in the first iteration what is percentage d i plus 1 in the first iteration what is i 0 so 0 plus 1 means 1 so we will get out we will get that message yes enter arrival time of process 1 next enter arrival time of process 2 likewise next scan of percentage d comma m percent at of i so arrival times are successfully read next bus two times Enter burst to time of process of percentage D. What is percentage D? I plus 1. So process of 1, process of 2, process of 3. Likewise, we can read all the processes. So scan of percentage D comma M percent BT of 5. So first here we are computing the completion time. So first let's see uh, problematically how we can compute the uh, completion time. So here uh, uh, if we in order to solve this problem, we are making the use of uh, GAN chart. Here for the, the first process arrival time is 0. It is first come first served. So here the jobs are arrived in this order. So here P1. P1 arrived at 0 milliseconds. So P1 arrived at 0 milliseconds. Next. What is the burst to time of P1? 3 milliseconds. So 0 plus 3 means 3 milliseconds. So we can say that P1 completion time is 3. So here initially this... Uh, uh, sum should contain 
the arrival time of zero process. So that's why here we have written so sum equal to at of zero. If you see here, what is the first statement? Sum equal to at of zero. That is the reason. Next, for j equal to zero, for j equal to zero, j less than n, j plus plus. So if we have five processes, we need to compute the completion time for each and every process. Next. What is the initial value of the sum? 0. So sum equal to 0. Here, initially, sum equal to AT of 0. In this example, the initial arrival time of process 1 is 0. So that's why sum contains 0. So sum equal to sum plus 0 plus. What is BT of 0? BT of 0 is 0. So 0 plus 3 means 3. So that 3 will be stored in sum. Next, we have to store sum in CT of J. So, CT of 0 equal to sum. So, th that is nothing but CT of 0. So, this is CT of 0. It contains completion time of the first two process. Next, what is the arrival time of P2 process? 3. Next, P2 process burst time is 6. So, 3 plus 6 means 9. 3 plus 6 means 9. So, so if you see here, the for loop will be repeated one more time. J plus plus. Now, J will become 1. 1, 1 less than 5, S yes, condition is true, sum equal to sum plus, what is the previous value in sum, 3, 3 plus, burst to time of the current process is 6, 3 plus 6 means 9, so now sum contains 9, now that 9 will be assigned to CT of 1, so, so what is the second process completion time, 9, so that 9 is available in PTF2, so this is nothing but completion time, if you see here, what is P1 completion time? P1 completion time is 3. What is P2 completion time? 9. So we have written 9 here. Next, 9 plus P3 arrival time is 9. What is the burst to time of P3? 4. So 9 plus 4 means 13. So that 13 is written here. Next to 13 plus, what is P4 burst time? 5. So 13 plus 5 means 18. 18 is nothing but P4 completion time. Next, 18 plus 2 means 20. So 20 is nothing but the last process completion time. So like this we can easily compute the completion time. Now let us see about turn around time. Turn around time. First to see the problem. Here this column represents turn around time. So the formula for the turn around time is completion time minus arrival time. So turn around time specifies how much time does CPU executes a process but here we have arrival times if arrival times are not given then we can say that turnaround time and completion time both are same only both are same only but here arrival times are given so the formula for the turnaround time is completion time minus arrival time completion time minus arrival time so this column represents completion time whereas the first column second column represents arrival time so 3 minus 0 means 3 minus 0 means 3. So 3 is nothing but completion time of P1 process. Next 9 minus 2 means 7. So 7 is uh, the turnaround time of the second process. Next 9. Next 18 minus 6, 12. 20 minus uh, 8, 12. So here the formula for the turnaround time is completion time minus arrival time. If you see the program here. So here for loop repetition, we are using K. We can use any variable. It is your choice. So, TAT of K equal to CT of K. What is TAT? Turn around time of K equal to CT of K. Completion time of K minus arrival time of K. So, if you see the first process. So, turn around time of 0 equal to what is the completion time of 0? 3. 3 minus what is the arrival time of 0? 3. So, 3 minus 0 means 3. So, now the turn around time contains 3. Now, that 3 should be added to the Total TAT, total turnaround time. So that's why we are using a statement called total turnaround time equal to total turnaround time plus add this value. What is the initial process TAT? 3. So likewise, uh, process by process turnaround time will be added. We see here TAT of K equal to completion time of K minus arrival time of K. Next to total TAT equal to total TAT plus TAT of K. The initial value of total TAT is, what is the initial value? 0. Likewise, we have computed uh, this uh, uh, 
uh, waiting time also. Let's see how we can compute the waiting time. Waiting time means how much time does a process wait in the ready queue. The formula for the waiting time is turn around time minus barrest to time. So this column represents turn around time. Whereas this column represents barrest to time. So 3 minus 3 means 0. Next, 7 minus 6 means 1. Next, 9 minus 4 means 5. 12 minus 5 means 7. 12 minus 2 means 10. So if you see here, if you see the program. So here we have a for loop for a waiting time. So here also we are using K. It is your choice. You can use any variable name. It may be I or J. Waiting time of K equal to uh, TAT of K minus BT of K. Next, that waiting time should be added to the total waiting time. So if you see here, if you see here, waiting time of 0 equal to, uh, next, uh, waiting time of 0 equal to, what is TAT of 0? 3 minus what is burst to time of 0? 3. So 3 minus 3 means 0. So that 0 should be added to the total turnaround time. So if you see here, what is total turnaround time? 3 plus 7, 10. 10 plus 9, 19. 19 plus 12, 31. 31 plus 12, 43. So 43 by 5. So what is the value? 8.6 milliseconds is the average turnaround time. So likewise, if we compute the total waiting time, 1 plus 5, 6. 6 plus 7, 13. 13 plus 10, 23. So 23 by 5 means 4.6 milliseconds is the output output so if you see here if you see here uh, yeah all, all are calculated next in the output we have to display the output in the tablet format so first to display process next to slash t a tab space will be printed ad means arrival time don't uh, type arrival time if you type arrival time then the, then it is very very difficult to display the entire uh, data in a tablet format so just use shortcuts so bt burst to type slash t ct completion time slash t tat turnaround time slash t wt waiting time after that use minimum uh, two slashes so that the cursor will be placed in the new lines two new lines we will get displayed next for repetition we are using i loop if you see here print of slash and p percentage d what is percentage d i plus one so first to p1 will be printed next to p2 will be printed next to p3 will be printed likewise Next, what is second percentage D? The second percentage D is nothing but arrival time. What is third percentage D? Burst to time. What is fourth percentage D? Completion time. Next, turnaround time. Next, waiting time. Next, waiting time. Next, after that, we have to display the uh, total average turnaround time, average waiting time. We will display that only once. So, that's why there is no need to use inside the for loop. So, outside the for loop, average turnaround time is percentage f slash n comma total tat by n here what is total tat it is a floating point variable so float by integer means float is the result okay now let us uh, compile the program alt c so compilation is over now let us run the program so enter total number of processes so here already we have some inputs so according to that inputs uh, give the data enter the data so total number of processes are, so how many processes we have? We have five processes. Next, arrival time of process 1, 0. Burst to time of process 1, 3. Next, arrival time of process 2, 2. Arrival time 6. Next, arrival time of process 3, 4. Burst to time 4. Next, 6. Next, 5. Next, 8. Next, 2. If you see here, what is the output? What is the output? The average uh, turnaround time is 8.6. Waiting time is 4.6. 8.6, 4.6. 8.6, 4.6. Alt F5. If you see here, 8.6, 4.6. Average turnaround time is 8.6. Average waiting time is 4.6. Here the first column is process. Second column is arrival time. Third column is burst time. So those two are the inputs. Arrival time, burst time. Next we need to compute completion time. Turnaround time and waiting time. Uh, I will share the program in the description. So go through the description for the program. Uh, this is about FCFS program in C language.